Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Standing in the Gap Morning Prayer as we are praying for our nation, for the election, and uh, for the leadership of our country. It is Wednesday, October the 14th, and um, so grateful for those of you who have um, made the commitment to be a part of this and pray every day and um, to to, I, I look at it as to serve our community in this way and our leaders and the struggle and, and um, you know, how to ride along again with the police department and uh, with one of our officers and just was again reminded the struggle of our leaders and those that are trying to serve our community. And, and I think this is uh, our way of serving them is that, you know, each morning, each day, we take some time to pray for them and, um, you know, in, in that way, ask God to protect and encourage and give them wisdom. And want to remind you that we are setting up prayer for each of the uh, members of the police department, the staff. And so if that's something that you would like to join us in, please let us know. We will be sending out uh, names for you to pray specifically for probably this morning and or this or this afternoon. And uh, so if you haven't done that and you would like to participate, we would love to have you do that. Um, we have, we've picked out three verses that really, I, I kind of prayed through this whole concept of standing in, that, in the gap because it can get um, heated, let's, let's just say, to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to put it lightly. And, and each of us, we can get to the point uh, where we're so passionate about certain issues that maybe we um, lose our mind a little bit. I, I know, you know, I can get, um, I can lose my temper very quickly when talking about certain issues and certain things that are going on. And so um, three verses that, that I felt like maybe should guide us, uh, not only in our prayer, uh, but even in our behavior, even in what we do and what we say. And so those three verses that we are reading every day as a reminder for ourselves to start with is Psalm 5110, which says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. So boy, let's start with, hey God, make sure my heart's right. Uh, make sure I'm seeking the right things. Uh, make sure that I am putting down my flesh as I participate um, in the prayers that I'm going to put before God. Uh, the, the second verse is Romans 12 and 18, and it says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So even though it gets heated, even though we have pretty strong opinions on certain issues, that we remember this verse, that, that we're asking that uh, as much as it's possible, that I'm gonna gonna try to live at peace. So we're going to have conflict. Uh, peace doesn't mean there is no conflict. Peace means there's a calm and maybe a candor uh, to conflict. And, and so that's so important. And the third, of course, being uh, Colossians 4, 6, which says, let your conversations be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. So these are our Kind of our guiding verses, uh, Psalm 5110, Romans 12, 18, and Colossians 4, 6 for our standing in the gap time as we're praying up until uh, election day for our leaders. So a couple more verses I want to give you today just as prayer points for those of you who may be joining us for the first time. Um, not, not trying to give you a devotional as much as just kind of prime your prayer pump. And so to give you some guiding thoughts to maybe say a few words, read a few verses that would let the Holy Spirit lead you to the way you should pray today and how you should pray for leaders um, or the things that are going on in our country, elections, uh, individuals. Maybe some of you will be prompted to pray for a neighbor who you've had conversations across the fence and they're sort of mad or really aggressive about their particular candidate or this particular policy or that kind of thing. And, uh, and again, we're, we're to be, we're to be peacemakers. We're to, to come and bring the kingdom. Uh, but we bring the kingdom and our weapon is love. Um, and we, we have a hard time sometimes putting down, uh, the sword to win arguments to understand how much it is that we're supposed to win people. And so, um, 
the, the verses that, that I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me this morning, I'm going to start with one that's very familiar, and that's John 14, 6 and 7. And it says, Jesus answered this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So beginning with the concept and the, and the one that I just want to underline, we know he's the way. He's the only way to heaven. Um, everything else is a religion uh, that actually has a bunch of do's and don'ts. But Christianity is a way. It is the way to get to heaven. It is the way to have relationship with God the Father again and be in relationship. It says he's the life. In other words, for us to have true life, it's only going to be through Jesus. But I want to focus on the middle one this morning. And it says that he is the truth. Um, and I want to focus on that. And I want us to pray today for the concept of truth. And um, interesting sort of scene that happens in the Bible. Jesus is taken before the governor of, of the region, and he's kind of on trial. And the Jewish people have put him in that place, and, and uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, can they kill him? Uh, they're trying to get rid of him. And so he's standing there before the governor, and he's explaining that his kingdom is not of this world, right? And that, um, um, and, and so what, and the governor goes, well, so you're a king. And, and let me read you this verse, because it gives us some real understanding of uh, of who Jesus is and why he came. John 18, 37. It's, uh, it says, you are a king then, says Pilate. And Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. So he's first, you know, we read that first verse, he is the truth. In this statement, he says, everyone who's on the side of truth listens to me because I am truth. And then he says this statement that he's come here to testify to the truth. Well, why would Jesus feel the need to come and testify truth to the truth other than the truth has been twisted and changed and deception has happened because we have an enemy and our enemy is the devil who is the great deceiver who wants to twist truth and twist ideas and and boy do we see the rhetoric and all that is going on within the political realm and even within our culture to twist the truth and so I felt wow that's that's kind of the way that maybe today we would pray that that truth would prevail and ultimately what we're saying is that we we would want Jesus to prevail uh, in every situation so whether it be the Supreme Court hearings whether it be in political debate, uh, whether it be in our elections. Um, I think the, the two things that really stuck out to me in concept was to ask the Lord to thwart any efforts of those who would try to remove religious freedom. Because if we don't have the freedom to express and the freedom to, to live out truth, um, then we've taken away. And so one of the things that we really need to be praying and asking God, and in some ways I think repenting, because we do have to be careful and remember some of the things that may be happening may be consequences um, of us not living truth, of us allowing um, children to be to be killed, and, and some of the things that we've allowed. And, and, and so we've got to ask God, will you thwart... Um, the, 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 this effort to pull away from religious freedom or the freedoms that we have in our country. Um, and, and, and God, would you uh, almost feel like looking at Sodom and Gomorrah and saying, you know, if there's 50 righteous people, will you not, will you not, you know, burn it down? If there's, if there's 20, if there's 10, and really that's the idea behind us doing standing in the gap is, uh, boy, I, I wouldn't call myself righteous, uh, maybe nor any of you, uh, but the fact that we would get up this morning or the fact that we would take this time today and say, God, we're coming before you. We're asking and repenting for our country, repenting for things that we've been a part of. Would you still let your truth reign in this place? Would you still, and, and um, just going before God with that, <clears throat> excuse me, Galatians 5 and 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again 
buy a vehicle of slavery. And, and boy, when I put that in the context of this, you know, we are to stand firm. We need to vote. We need to express our opinion. Um, we need to have conversations now. Remember our opening verses. Create in me a clean heart. As much as is possible with me, I live at peace with everyone. Let my conversations be gracious, okay? Let me fill something in there. Let my posts be gracious. Uh, let my let any comments or anything that I that I say let it be gracious. But we are to stand firm, and 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 we have to find this healthy balance and this place, right, where we have healthy conversations and we stand for truth and we express truth, but we do it in such a way that is palatable uh, for somebody who stands on the complete opposite spectrum from us. Um, maybe we have forgotten sometimes that when we are expressing our political views and we're doing it from a biblical standpoint at that moment we're witnessing and so and so are we going at it from the standpoint of witnessing i'm trying to express truth i'm trying to express who jesus is um, in this understanding and so the last point that i kind of put on my notes here was to pray for truth to become valued again um just being honest, uh, I, your pastor had a little bit of a, um, uh, the last couple of days, I, I had a little bit of a fight with, um, and, and this word might be a little heavy to say, but almost kind of depression from the standpoint of kind of hearing things that we sort of are starting to go, eh, you know, that's not such a big deal. Let's don't worry about that. You know, or we're going to back off on our discipline here, or we're going to, uh, let's just kind of skirt that. Here. And I was just, I was just thinking um, that compromise um, is actually a way for us to undermine truth. And, 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 and it, as I looked at things in our community that we just kind of go, oh, don't worry about this, or, you know, we, we're in a good old boy um, politics kind of a community. And so, you know, if it's so-and-so, a friend of mine, I kind of take care of them or help them with this or, you know, this kind of thing, or maybe the way we educate our children, we kind of, and so I, you know, we've got to get back to a place where, listen, we're loving, we're kind, our heart is clean, our conversations are gracious, but that we stand for truth, that, that we say wrong is wrong, that we get back to a place of, consequences um, for wrong action and understanding. I, I think that's what God is going to bless is a people who get back to the word we don't like probably the most, and that is obedience. Just pure obedience to what is true and to what is right. So John 8 and 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So Man, I, um, I'm praying for truth in Mike. I'm praying for truth in Church of the Lakes. I'm praying for truth in the Leesburg community um, and in the areas that I have influence. I'm praying for truth in the Supreme Court hearings. I'm praying for truth in the hearts of the men and women that have been chosen to represent us. Um, that, and, and really, ultimately, what we're praying there is for Jesus to be known, because uh, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So I hope that kind of primes the pump for you this morning on how you might pray. Maybe the Holy Spirit's given you some specific ideas about truth in your context, in your particular niche, in the place that God has placed you, and in the spheres of influence that God has put you in. He puts you there on purpose. Um, regardless of what you think of you, uh, he obviously thinks that you have enough inside of you and the Holy Spirit inside of you to be responsible for the spheres he's put you in. So as you pray today, let's pray um, that truth would be valued again, that truth, truth would reign. Let's pray uh, that, that God would help us to be bold and stand up where we need to stand up, but to do it graciously to do it lovingly, to do it with a clean heart inside of us. And so, man, I hope that kind of primes the pump for you this morning. Let me pray for you 
and, um, and then let you spend some time uh, praying what the Holy Spirit has put on your heart through these few minutes together. So, Father, um, first, I repent. I repent of compromise in, in, in my own life. I, I repent of just saying, oh, that's okay, and, and letting things go that, that are not okay, that are not, that are not right, that are not true, that Jesus don't line up with you. And so would you give us courage and strength again to stand strong and to stand firm in places where we need to say no or we need to sort of take a stand? God, continue to make our conversations gracious and then let us be people of peace. But in the midst of that, let us not be afraid to stand up and, and, and draw lines and make decisions in a kind and loving way but, but standing for you, Jesus. I pray over not only the Supreme Court hearings, um, but, but all the different things that are going on, especially behind closed doors in, in our government, whether it be locally, or whether state or federal, would your truth reign? Jesus, would you uh, be known again in the halls of our government? And, 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 and would you raise up men and women who have a great passion to see you and truth reign. Father, I pray for our president, that you would put people around him that are speaking truth into him. I pray for his cabinet, that you have people around them that are speaking truth into them. I pray, God, over each of those that are overseeing these hearings with the Supreme Court, would you speak truth into them? God, I pray for both sides of the aisle, that your truth would reign and be real and true, and that we would get back to an understanding of basic truth that only can be found in, in you, Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And so where truth is twisted in us, would you make it known to us, Holy Spirit? Where truth is twisted in our own homes, make it known to us and give us courage to make it right. Where, where truth is twisted in our community, give us uh, the, the courage to stand up where we have influence to make a difference in our workplace, in our schools, in our neighborhoods. And so we pray this morning, God, we just, we're banging on the door of heaven asking, uh, Jesus, that you would reign again, that truth would reign again, that, that we would see a move and an awakening in our country back to who you are, back to basic understanding um, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so we thank you for this time. And God, um, give us courage today um, to be kind and to be gracious, but to be firm and stand for truth. We just pray it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Love each one of you guys. Have a great day. Uh, clean heart, gracious conversations but bold in standing for truth today. Have a great one.